Let's go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for wisdom. We thank you for revelation. And God, I just pray that it flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I yield myself into your very capable hands. Therefore, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, none of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. The Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move up and down every aisle, in and out of every row, every television screen, every family room, every computer screen, every mobile device. Have your way. Overwhelm us with your presence. Our hearts are inclined to hear the word of God. Our ears are anointed to hear the word of God. And Father, in this holy interaction with the word, the seed of God, and the heart of man, we thank you in advance for the breakthroughs, the manifestations, the answers, the wisdom, the ease, and the peace that the word of God brings to our lives. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, oh, go ahead and shout about that one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you may be seated in the house of God. We're going to hop into this. And uh, I pray that the word of God is good to you, uh, like it's good to me. Uh, I couldn't do without it. And what I'm going to teach you tonight is, is, is how I got launched into ministry. And, 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 and I believe this with everything I have. Uh, I, I just believe what I'm, what I'm going to teach you tonight about the anointing. And I want to say this. The anointing comes at a price. It comes at a price. And we're going to see in the word of God, it comes at a price. You know, so many times I see, you know, spiritual lineage, people in spiritual lineage claiming things. And, you know, I'm this, I'm that. And. And, and, and this is my spiritual father, this is my spiritual mother, so on and so forth. And, and what they don't understand is the anointing, it comes at a price. The anointing on our lives is to remove burdens and destroy yokes. Not go to work, come home from work, stack up money, start a business, make money, stack money up, and that's it. No, 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 no. You should be laying hand on the sick. You know, the blind should be recovering their sight. You should be defying the odds. College education or no college education, you should be walking in tremendous wisdom that defies your intellect. And I'm talking about the anointing, and we're going to see it in the Word of God uh, tonight. You know, it's a forgotten subject, you know. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about it, but I tell you what, if you're, if you're ever going to do anything significant, you're going to need the anointing of God on your life. Now, <clears throat> let me, let, let's, let's just see anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is the burden removing, write this down in your notes, the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Now I want you to think about, I want you to think about those two words, burden removed, yoke destroying. And ask yourself this question, what's heavy in your life? I know we look good, we talk good, we smell good, we dress good, we drive good, we live good. But at the end of the day, the question is tonight, what's heavy in your life? Is there insecurity? Are there insecurities that's bombarding your soul? Are there financial stresses that's bombarding your soul? Did your spouse step outside of the marriage 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago, and it's still bombarding your soul? What's heavy? The anointing is there to remove that burden and destroy that yoke, and it, does just, it doesn't just remove the burden and destroy the yoke. It inserts God's peace and truth when it's done. And it gives you a peace that passes all understanding. The anointing cannot be manufactured by man. The anointing cannot be bought. The anointing cannot be purchased. The anointing can by, cannot come from a college uh, university. The anointing comes from the almighty God, Adonai, our Lord and our master. Amen? So let's just look at the word of God as we define this. So the anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power. The burden removing, yoke destroying, power. The anointing is what empowers a man or a woman to function. Watch this now. And, and please take notes tonight because I'm talking to you and you're going to op operate in this. The, uh, the anointing is, is what empowers a man or a woman to function supernaturally. 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 
my boss and my company, they're going crazy. The anointing, the anointing causes you to rise above that. It causes you to function supernaturally. You know, I didn't relocate, re- relocate my family down to Jacksonville uh, 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 in 2003 just for the heck of it, to play games, come down here and make money, start a business or whatever. I didn't do that. I was already pursuing the anointing. Because I knew and I had seen and I had been taught on it, it removes burdens and it destroys yokes and it does things to you. Uh, It does things to your soul and detox your soul. That education, a spouse, a new car, a new house, a new baby cannot do. The anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. If you ever see an ox in the field, he's got this big wooden yoke on his neck. It's heavy, and it keeps you down. And what happens to us as believers, we, 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 we come to church week in and week out, and it's an agenda checked off the list. But no power. No freedom of soul. And we think more degrees is going to do it. We think more, more, more uh, uh, letters behind our name is going to do it, and it never does. We think more money is going to do it. Listen, the two richest people in the world are separating. That tells me, their brother, money don't solve nothing. The anointing removes the burden. So what's heavy in your life? Somebody says, I don't have that much heavy. There's a lot of things going on in the background of our souls that we don't want to face. We don't want to walk down that dark alley with God and the Holy Spirit and deal with it. But it's time tonight to allow the anointing of God to remove that burden and to destroy that yoke. So it empowers a man or woman to function supernaturally. The anointing is that which enables you to do supernatural things. Supernatural things. It enables us to do supernatural things. When I was... uh, 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 um, Uh, playing basketball in high school, we, we played our hometown, my, my hometown rivalry and, 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 and rival, and, and I'm telling you, <laughs> my gosh, you, you, when you're just in a flow, you're in a flow. And, and it's like you, you, you just can't miss, you just can't, you can't do anything wrong. And I'm talking in the first quarter, I had 21 points in the first quarter. And I was like, man, I was saying to myself, Everything I throw up is going in. I can't believe this. I can't even hear the people in the stands. My God, let me just try this. Well, let me try that. And everything was going in. And it was just such a flow. It was like an out-of-body experience. Let me tell you, as a believer, when the Holy Ghost is moving through you, you should be doing things supernaturally. And watch this, shocking yourself. Everything about a believer shouldn't be predictable. You should be shocking yourself. Predictable is medication, which we we thank God for medication. God put the wisdom in the earth to get it here. That's predictable. Three times a day, 90 days, three times a day for six months, and it's gone. But the supernatural and the anointing can remove that burn before you can blink your eyes and you're healed. But if you don't believe that, we'll just case hurrah, case hurrah, case hurrah, and God doesn't want that. God wants us to walk in maximum power, and that is his anointing. This is a must, this anointing, this is a must for those of us who have a passion for the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives. I can't tell you the amount of times where, 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 see, if you never operated in the unknown in life and say, God, take the wheel. Lord, speak to me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know which way to go. Tomorrow it may be gone. Tomorrow it may be taken. They want 15 grand by Friday. I don't know where it's going to come from. I don't know, but I do trust in you. Others may trust in chariots. Others may trust in horses, but I trust in you. You never, forso- for, for, you, you never left me. You never forso- for, forsake me. And I'm telling you, the anointing kicks in. And if, it ever, if it's ever kicked in on you, there's a warm sensation that comes over your body. And you know that the presence of the Lord is right there. You know that God is speaking through you. God is working through you. God is speaking through you, and God is working through you, and he's doing mighty things through you. The anointing removes the burden and destroys the yoke. If you're a parent, you're going to have to have the anointing. 
When kids are one, two, three, four, five, six months old, 12, they're very predictable. When they start to get their own self-will, 11, 12, 13, 14, you're going to need the anointing on your life not to give predictable speeches. You're going to need the wisdom of God to rear those children. There's some things you're just not going to know. You're not going to understand. But the anointing will help you do it. Amen. The, the anointing will have you operating in the supernatural. Glory to God. The anointing makes all the difference. We're going to get to the scripture here. The anointing makes all the difference. The anointing of God makes all the difference. The anointing on your life makes all the difference. Nothing can take the place of the anointing. No likes, no reactions, no followers, no nothing. Nothing can take the place. The anointing is distributed by God. And it makes the difference. Nothing in the natural gives us the anointing. Catch a hold of that. Nothing in the natural gives us the anointing. There's a transfer of it, but, of it, but it's a spiritual transfer. <laughs> God, have mercy. Like I said earlier, there's a price to pay for the anointing. And if you're waiting for your call in ministry and you're just kind of cruising and coasting and you're not serving and you're not serving the people and you're not and you're not living for God in your private life and all this kind of stuff. And you want to affect the masses and you want to affect a, a, a large group of people. Let me tell you something. You're going to need the anointing on your life. But you're going to see in the word of God tonight that David was in a field tending to the sheep got anointed by the prophet and went back to the field with a king's anointing until it was time for him to rule. And we're going we're gonna to crack that open. <laughs> so it's not education, not money, not, not, uh, no environment. We can't fake the anointing. You know, I can't get up here and fake pastoring. There's just, just no way. It's just, it's just you, you, you cannot do it. My pastor said, look, I can give you everything except the draw. <laughs> I can give you everything except the draw. So, so, so you can try to go by the book with what you're doing. You can try to go by the book, playing the guitar. You can try to go by the book, playing the drums. You can try to go by the book, playing praise and, uh, 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 singing praise and worship. You can try to go by the book, preaching the word of God. But I'm telling you this, there's going to come a time when the anointing is going to have to be coming off of your life to remove burdens and destroy yokes. And you can hit that key, and you can hit that drum, and you can stand up and preach that word, and scales fall off our eyes. Eyes are open, burdens are removed, yokes are destroyed, and people begin to see God clearly in their lives. That's the anointing. It removes. So there's no such thing as, 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 as go to the internet and come up with something. No. Are, are you kidding me? To carry a church, you're going to have to have the anointing of God on your life. To carry that large nonprofit that you're trying to build and you believe God put it in your heart, to carry that, you're going to have to have the anointing of God on your life. And if you are in ministry or in any kind of outreach trying to do anything to minister for popularity, I promise you, you're going to burn out and people are going to see it because it's not going to go anywhere. You don't want popularity. You want the anointing on your life. <laughs> and your lights can be wrong, and your internet can be slow, and you can be sitting in front of that computer talking, but when you open your mouth, yeah. burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed. Amen? Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let's go to, uh, uh, well, 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 hold on. Uh, 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 ooh, oh, boy. We can't fake the anointing. It's a holy empowerment from God that causes us, that causes you to supersede your natural ability. I want you to get a hold of that, to supersede your natural ability. It defies normal capability. Listen, I went to college. I got a degree, all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, stuff that's in books that God is teaching me, to, to help me move my life forward, this ministry forward, and some things me and my wife about to do. We're about to dive off into commercial real estate, and I'm telling you, we're not diving off in it just to make money. We're diving off into it to, 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 to change the kingdom of God, Amen. to influence the kingdom of God. Amen. Making money is easy, but if you're making money and it's not to glorify God, it's just a waste of time. Nobody is being impacted. God, have mercy. We live in a time of substitutes. That's what I wanted to teach on this. We live in a time of substitutes. 
where anybody can grab a computer, anybody can go online, anybody can go live and start saying, thus says the Lord. And it's like, man, you're messing people's lives up because you ain't removing nothing. You're confusing stuff. So we live in a time of substitutes. For every expensive name brand item, there's a fake substitute. But if we think we can substitute talent or intelligence or a charming personality for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we are very much mistaken. Somebody says, why are you teaching on that? So you can go ahead and get to the real. <laughs> God, go ahead and bring it on. I'm tired of dodging. Go ahead and bring the conversation on with me and my dad. Go ahead and bring the conversation on with me and my mom. Go ahead and bring the conversation on. Go ahead and bring the promotion on. Go ahead and bring the outreach on. I am ready. I am anointed. Guess what? You want to be caught tending to the sheep. And if you're, if, if, you, if you're watching this online and you're sitting in somebody's church and you're not busy tending, serving, and you say you got a call of God on your life, I'm telling you, you don't have a call of God on your life. You want to be popular before the people. And we're, going to see what, we're going to see what happens to those kind of people because the people chose Saul, and, 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 and we've seen what happened with that. You don't want the people to choose you. You want God to choose you. <clears throat> nothing can take the place of the anointing. Absolutely nothing. We need real anointings from the Holy Spirit. You need, you need to be able to walk into your mother's room and say this right here, if she's ailing, or your father's room, if he's ailing, or your grandmother's room, if she's ailing, or your grandfather, if he's ailing, and say, enough is enough, I'm about to lay a hand on the sick and they will recover. you got to spend time with God. you got to believe in the burden remover, yoke destroying power. you got to believe that you lay hands on the sick and they recover. you got to believe that you lay hands on yourself when you're, you're sick, that, that, that your hands are the first go-to when you don't feel well. You lay hands on yourself. Your hands are the first go-to when you feel distressed and stressed and out of pocket and out of sync in life and don't know how you're going to get out of the bed today and no, don't know how tomorrow's going to turn out. you got to be able to lay hands on yourself. I'm shocked at the amount of people who want ministry to others and can't have, don't know how to have ministry to self. <sighs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get back up here. I'm not teaching what I don't know. I'm not teaching what I haven't lived and still live. Um, oh, boy. <sighs> Look for Look for. Look for. Man, this thing is. <laughs> God help me. So I said, what's wrong? And this, I'm going to keep flowing here, but my Lord have mercy. I'm going to throw it in my back pocket. Look for. Verse 18, this is Jesus talking. Luke 4, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say that, say that about yourself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has who, 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 Adonai, his Lord and his master, his father. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Next verse. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, <clears throat> to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In your notes, write this down. The anointing is for others. <laughs> Jesus says, he's, he, he's caused me to be this way to go, to go remove burdens and destroy yokes off of others. You want to be anointed? You want to be a powerful woman of God? A powerful man of God? Get others minded. 
<laughs> you want to be a powerful leader? Get others-minded. There's something about being others-minded as a believer. And Jesus said, listen, I just don't have this anointing to go around and be cute. I don't have this anointing to, for people just to fall out and all the, and all the, and all the focus is directed to me. No, 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 no. I'm here on an assignment from my father. He anointed me to do these things. He anointed me to go out here and, and lay hands on the sick and they recover and people sight come back to him. He anointed me to do that. I'm telling you in your prayer time and your secret time with God, get others on your mind. And if you get you out of the equation, which is very hard to do, <laughs> which is very hard to do. Paul said, Paul says, look, I'm not going to leave myself out. I, I really believe in myself, can do <laughs> all things. But know this now, it's through the one who's anointed me to do it. So I'm not saying lose all self-confidence because Paul didn't do that. Paul said, okay, let me tell you something. I'm a bad boy. I'm bad to the bone now. I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm good at what I do. But let me tell you how I do it. Let me tell you where I get all my strength from. It's through Christ, the anointed one. So I'm not saying, you know, be anointed and you ain't good at what you do. No, no, no. I'm saying you got to have some confidence in yourself now. Like I said Sunday, when you walk in the room, shake somebody's hand, they, you need to be saying to yourself, glad you can meet me. Your life will never be the same again. <clears throat> Glad you can meet me. Why? You carry the anointing. You carry the anointing. Listen, listen, when I first met my pastor, God gave me three instructions. He's never received money from this man. You're here to serve this man. And watch this. He said, have zero resistance when he's speaking to your life. I said, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even know because the anointing flows down. But if you got resistance in your heart, if your cup is all full, if you know it all, you hadn't dealt with the rebellion in your heart, you hadn't dealt with your daddy or your mama leaving you, men of God are trying to lead you and take you and bring you higher, I'm telling you right now, you're going to push back against that and say this right here, I don't want nobody controlling my life. You need to go read Elijah and Elijah. <laughs> Listen, there wasn't a time when he was standing in the pool pit and say, hey, I need that I wasn't the first one to do. <laughs> Sold him to our pastor every single month. And we gave offerings and we gave tithes every single month. I was sworn into that anointing. We were sworn into that anointing. Why? We believed in the oil flowing down. And we believed when, when you're in a man of God's house and you want what's on his life, let me tell you something. You, 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 you. <laughs> You, 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 you can't think that, 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 that this lady over here, this person over here, that's laying their life down for God. Let me tell you something. There's going to be a transfer of the anointing on their lives. And every one of our sons and daughters are anointed to advance, anointed to do business, anointed to make money. They are, no, they are anointed to do it. Why? It's flowing down from me and my wife. Well, I, I, I feel like, you know, Dr. Freeman, well, whatever's on Dr. Freeman's life, it's flowing out on your life, I guess. <laughs> well, I know where mine come from. <clears throat> oh, gosh. First John. First John, real quick. <sighs> you, got, you, you just got to hear me tonight. Because this, this, you, you, you deserve this. <laughs> you deserve it. We're not talking about working for nothing. You deserve this. You have an inheritance of this. <laughs> you deserve this. Man, you think, you, you think, man, fast as he is something. My Lord. The anointing, it, 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 at the hem of the garment is so thick and dark. Because that's, that's, where the, that, that's where the anointing was when the, the lady would issue blood. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his it, it, all, all the anointing had dripped down. And I'm telling you, from, 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 from Oral Roberts down, Creflo Dollar, Pastor Michael Smith, all the way down. Listen, uh, uh, our sons and daughters, it's, it's a generational 
anointing that's going down. And I said, man, I don't want to teach this. This is going to sound arrogant. This is going to sound prideful. Now you said, you got to teach it because you're living in it and you're walking in it, and it is what has built your life. Teach it. Teach it. First John. Woo, give me the glory to God up in this place. <laughs> Woo, I'm getting tickled. I'm getting tickled. Somebody said, why, why are you getting tickled? Because, because you're getting this. You're getting this. First John, chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 17. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Verse 18. Uh, <clears throat> little children, watch this now. Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are many Antichrists, whereby we know that is the last time. Verse 19, they went out from us, <clears throat> but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Verse 20, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Let me tell you something. You have an unction from the Holy One to know all things and to live in this anointing. Don't think it's strange if you're committed to church. Don't think it's strange if you're committed to children's, committed to youth, committed to the parking lot, committed to ministry. Don't think it's strange if you're committed to it. Why? Because there's a lot who went away from us, and they continue to do so. And I'm here to tell you, you are, you are flowing in the anointing. You have a right to the anointing. you got to know that you have an unction from the Holy One to live in this, preach in this, sing in this, serve in this, do business in this, father in this, mother in this. I'm here to tell you, but you gotta have, you got to have a revelation of what I'm talking about tonight and know that God has anointed you. Don't live a demoted life. Running away from responsibility, running away from cause, running away. Well, I really don't want to serve in this vision. I want to serve over here, and you're crazy. Forget what you feel the anointing is. Because <laughs> I sure couldn't do it. But I know it's on this house. <laughs> I know we're excelling God. I know we're excelling life. Boy, if I start reading you some of the testimonies of, 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 of stuff that people are getting healed from, student loans being canceled, contracts being inked up. I start telling you stuff like that. You may think I'm bragging, but I'm, I, I, I know I'm not bragging because people are excelling in life, in this ministry. People are excelling in God in this ministry. <clears throat> oh, man. Whew, Lord, have mercy. <sighs> Psalm 5. Well, I need to get some air kicked on up in this camp here. I think it's the anointing. Because I'm warm. You can tell when it hits you, your knees almost buckle. And you say stuff past your mind. Psalms 5. For the Lord will bless the righteous. What is the righteous? Right standing with God. And all of us are in right standing with God. And you're already blessed. Jesus is not hopping back up on the cross. You live a post-cross life. You're already blessed, already healed, already out of debt, already flowing in the supernatural. Listen, for the Lord will bless the righteous with favor. Will you compass him as with a shield? The anointing brings about wisdom and favor. Luke 2 verse 52 says, Jesus grew in what? Wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. With God and man. That's what the anointing does. The anointing causes favor to go ahead of you and remove the burden and destroy the yoke. But the anointing will never, ever on your behalf 
hurt someone. And we learn in the Lord's Prayer, it's our Father, not yours. It's our Father. It's your father and your ex-husband. It's your father and your ex-wife. It's your father and, your, and the kid that cursed you out. It's your father and the co-worker that's doing your own. It's their father too. So the anointing is never going to just go out and hurt someone. But I'll tell you what the anointing will do according to the word of God. <laughs> oh. So enemies, go ahead and grab a chair. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and grab a chair <laughs> and watch me burn in this thing and watch me flow in this thing. You thought I wasn't going to get promoted because you sent a crazy email or said something crazy, this, that, and the other. You thought I didn't have spiritual endurance with the anointing of God on my life. You thought I didn't know that the, the, the vengeance of the Lord, it, the vengeance is his, it's not mine. You thought I didn't know how to step back and let God be God in this situation. You thought I didn't know that I need to go ahead and bless you and do good to you because I know my God in the anointing on my life is going to remove this burden and destroy this yoke. And you just may find yourself on level, on floor eight in two months out of this department. Notice I didn't say lost your job. That's not God. God doesn't promote you with the anointing and somebody else is suffering in provision. No, 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 no. But he'll move them over here, cross town, move them on over here, put it in their heart to relocate or whatever they got to do. But you got to believe that you walk in this. Otherwise, you're going to try to fight devils with the natural and you always lose. When you do that. Oh boy. I tell you what. Go to uh first Samuel uh chapter sixteen. First Samuel chapter sixteen. First Samuel. Listen, I seen a 26-year-old man in Atlanta, Georgia, named Pastor Creflo Dollar build an $18 million debt-free dome. No banking background, no, no none of that. The flat-out anointing built that thing. Debt-free. $18 million in your 20s? That's the anointing of God <laughs> endorsing a man of God. God, have mercy. So 1 Samuel 16, we're going to look at this and unpack it real quick. We're going to read through this, and man, it's going to be a lot of reading. My gosh. But that's okay. We got to get this. And the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Listen, <clears throat> let me keep going. But I want to drop this in your spirit. You don't want people to choose you. You want God to choose you. He's asking the prophet, how long are you going to mourn over Saul? And I put a ticker in my notes just, just, just for tonight. Just for tonight and just for us. He said, how long are you going to mourn over what was? If, not, if you're not careful, people will only recognize you out of the season that God wants you to exit. People will keep you in a previous season. They tried to do it with me and my wife. This, this is not our previous church. <laughs> and people try to keep you in a previous season because that's how they relate to you from a previous season. So, so, so when God elevates you and you come out of being a leader as an elder, a leader as a deacon, a leader as a minister, and you become the leader, now all of a sudden, wait a minute now, I don't know if you can be my leader, but you can be a leader in my church. And if you're not careful, you will keep mourning the past. And you got somebody who joined Excel saying, feed me, water me, feed me, water me, feed me, water me. My life is growing. Feed me, watering. I've never heard anything like this before. I'm becoming free in Christ. My God, I see God. And they're saying, feed me, water me. You got to be careful that you're not mourning the past or those who've moved on. You got to walk in the anointing. You got to believe, believe in the anointing on your life that God can bring more. 
God can bring new into your life. God is taking you higher. God is taking you from glory to glory. But if you're not careful, you'll try to stay in a season that's absolutely over. And XL is a brand new thing. XL came out of heaven. XL Church is a brand new thing. But if you try to relate to me and Pastor Z from my previous church, you're going to miss out on what God is trying to do in your life. <clears throat> Let me get back in the Word. It's quiet up in here. <laughs> More Saul, see that I have rejected him from, from reigning over Israel. Fill thine horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. God says, what was is over. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. You can't be in bondage to people when God is talking to you here. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord, verse 3, and call Jesse to, sacrifice, to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what you shall do, and you shall anoint unto him, me him whom I name unto thee. God says, stop interpreting what I'm saying and just go. I've already chosen one. And Samuel did what the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming. You ever been around a real prophet? I tell you, you will have a reverential fear, buddy. Because I tell you right now, you're not going to lie. You're not going to get away with lying. You're not going to get away with trying to impress. You're not going to, none of that. Because they'll just say, stop. This, 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 this is going on with you. <laughs> There's a reverential fear. I've been around one. He says, Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, uh, Come, uh, are you peacefully? Are you coming peacefully? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to, to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that, the, 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 that he looked on Eli and said, Surely, the Lord's anointed is before him. Now you got to know this. Saul was a, was, 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 a, was, was a Benjamite. And the people chose Saul. Saul came from a wealthy family. His father Kish, he came from a wealthy family and he was a Benjamite. So he really wasn't supposed to be king. But the people chose him. Why? Because of his stature, his wealth, and he looked good. Six foot four buck. He looked good. I imagine Saul like uh, Khaleesi's husband on uh, game, the Game of Thrones. That's how I imagine Saul. <clears throat> and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eli, Eli, uh, Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not upon his countenance. Now see, an anointing is about to happen. A transfer is about to happen, and God has deployed the prophet to do it. He said, look not upon his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man sees. See, the anointing is seen with spiritual eyes. You can see people get ordained or get this or get that, and you're like, man, man, man why them? And it's like, man, you, she's favored this. Ain't no favor. You don't choose no favors when you're ordaining folks. Stuff gets raggedy when you do that. You got to hear from God. You don't choose people to be leaders in churches just because they're good people. Because when the heat comes on, good people may not be able to handle it. <clears throat> you choose because God said to do it. He says, he says, look, man, look on the outside. I look at the heart, verse 8. And Jesse called Aben, uh, Aben and, 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 and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Why do you keep bringing me all these jokers that the God ain't chosen? Then Jesse said, uh, Shema, to pass by. Come on, Shema. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before him. Notice this. The father didn't even recognize the one. But God did. Do we need endorsement from our natural father? Absolutely. But sometimes when you get in God and get in church, so on and so forth, you, you, you still walk in respect, greatly, greatly honor your, your father, this, that, and the other, but he may not be able to recognize the spiritual anointing on your life because Jesse could not see it. 
He kept choosing all the, the good looking ones and, 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 and the tall ones. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons uh, to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, man alive, good Lord, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are there any more children? <laughs> are there any more? Do you have any more? And he said, there remain of Yet the youngest, look, look at that phrase, yet the youngest. Yeah, if, it's like, pfft, yeah, there's another one. But I got him where I want him. I don't even see what's on his life. There remains the, yet, yet the youngest, and behold, he keeps the sheep in the back. And Samuel said unto Jesse, uh, oh, there's one tending to the sheep, not working for fame, not working for popularity. Not too popular because you shouldn't bring him in front of me, so you must not deem him too much of nothing. Watch the prophet. Fetch him. Go get him. Go get him. That's what God is saying to you tonight. That's what God is saying. That's God is speaking to the Holy Spirit. God is working. God is deploying angels saying, go get her. It's time. Go get him. It's time. I know the overlooked, I know this, I know that, but it, it, it's time. Now, you go get him, and I'm ready to preach. No, it may be go get him, join children's ministry. <laughs> go get him, go ahead and get in youth. I'll never forget, when I was going to World Changes, that, that, that man of God uttered one phrase. He said, a lot of you spiritual fat cats sitting up in here, coming, getting the word, speed racing back out the door, ain't serving nothing, ain't giving nothing, ain't doing nothing. He said, I'll tell you what, get out of here and start your own free will Baptist church. And boy, I got so offended at that. I got so offended at that. I was like, how dare he? But guess what? He was right. Sit up here getting fat, Derek. Get going, buddy. God has got to be calling on your life. Get going. But I don't know how to pray. Ain't no, ain't no preaching. Ain't no preaching. <laughs> it's servanthood. Get going. It's washing cars. Get going. <clears throat> God have mercy. Oh, gosh. He said, go fetch him, uh, for, for we will not sit down until he comes. So now the prophet is like anxious. He's, man, go get him. We ain't sitting down until he comes. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready. You now your kids come in from outside, smell like outside, dirt on their face, and socks are brown, and, and you won't dare let them sit on that sofa chair. You ready? Get your behind off my bed while I lay my head. Boy, you ready? And he sent him and brought him, and, and, and David was ready. And with all of a beautiful countenance, he was without any kind of beauty to him. And goodly to look to, and the Lord said. You don't want man to promote you. <laughs> you want God to tap you on the shoulder and say, okay, it's time to roll. Huh? I, but, but everything, how am I going to? Don't worry about that. <laughs> but it's time to roll. Yeah, but I had plans. Don't worry about that. I told you to commit them to me anyway. See, see God will let you believe what you want to believe to get you to where he wanted, wants you to go. So you can be over here on a man-made plan mission, and God is like, I'm not going to stop you. you got a free will. But in five years, you're going to realize, I didn't call you to do that. This is why you seek the Father when you're making life-altering decisions. You seek the Father. And Samuel took the horn of oil. <clears throat> if you hadn't done this with your children, you need to do it. <laughs> I'm not your children. And you get some oil and do it. Canola, sesame, sesame oil, olive oil, whatever. And olive oil back in the day, that's what they did it. But if you ain't got no olive oil, you just get, get, get some oil and baby oil and anoint your children. Anoint your wife. Anoint your husband. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of all the good looking ones, of all the educated ones, of all the tall ones. And he took the ruddy, the least liked one and say, you know what? I'm going to promote you in the midst of those who don't think you deserve this. That's why God prepares a table before your enemies. But you can't do it in the natural. 
You can't go in debt trying to impress folks. I'm going to show them I'm anointed. I'm going to buy my way to the blessing. And you look up, and your revolving debt is, is, is $4,500 a month trying to impress folks, and that doggone bear is on your back every 30 days. Why? Because it's more month at the end of the month than it is money because you tried to buy your prosperity. And God says, no, I'm going to anoint you. He took the oil anointed him in the midst of his brother, and the Spirit of the Lord. See, this is what we want, the anointing. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The anointing moves you forward. You're not going to digress. You're not going to go back. When you embrace this anointing and lift your hands to the Lord of Lords as a sign of surrenders and say, Lord, I receive everything you got. I receive your direction. I receive your pathway. God, I want to be on your path. I want to be in your divine will. And whatever that is, I receive that. I'm telling you, the anointing is going to move you forward swiftly. Because what you thought was ideal, you're not even supposed to be doing it. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. So Samuel rose and went to Ramah, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul it departed from Saul. God it gave Saul instructions. Listen, I want you to go out and kill the king. I want you to kill Agag. I want you to kill every sheep. I don't want to hear no bleep, bleating. I, want, I don't want to hear nothing. Go down there and kill him. And guess what? Saul didn't do that. Why? Because Saul was chosen for the people, and Saul wanted to live for the people. And God says, the anointing don't work like that. The anointing doesn't work like that. How in the ham sandwich, how in the heck did you allow people to talk you out of honoring God? How did you allow people to talk you out of serving in children's ministry and singing in the choir and playing in the band and serving in youth and serving in your church? How did you allow people to do that to you? Let me tell you something. God chooses those who are not driven by what the people say. Well, don't take all that. People. And you disengage and call it a sabbatical. Mm. And you know, let's write this down. Jesse had forecasted David as unqualified. I'm telling you right now, I don't care what the world is, uh, uh, it, what the world has classified you as unqualified. I came here to tell you tonight, you are qualified. Single mom, you can go to school and you got three, four kids, but don't try to play games with prosperity. Don't try to play games with business. Let me tell you something. I speak this over this church every, every single day. It's time for some five-figure deals. It's time for five-figure deals. It's, it's, it's time for five-figure deals. It's, 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 time to make, it's time to make 40, 50, 50 grand at the stroke of a pen. It's time for some five-figure deals to move the kingdom of God forward swiftly, move your life forward swiftly. What, and how, how does that happen? It doesn't happen by trying to get followers. It doesn't happen by trying to fool the rules of prosperity. It happens by saying this right here, be it, be it upon me, Lord. I receive everything you have for me. The anointing will also point out to each and every one of us what's stale in our lives. But if it makes you feel good, if it makes you feel popular, you'll keep doing it in the red. And God is like, okay, all right. <clears throat> so just had forecasted, David is unqualified. He looked at David and said, that, uh, the, 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 the prophet looked at David and said, that's him. Listen to me, put this down in your notes. Favor spots you immediately when you're anointed. <laughs> Favor will locate you and spot you immediately when you're anointed. The prophet said, that's him. Right there. Ruddy, muddy face, sweaty, smelling like outside. As soon as he seen him, he said, that's him. What is that? Let me tell you something. When you walk in the anointing, you can be back in the field tending to it. You ain't got to be in no office. You ain't got to be in no high rise. You ain't got to be in no bins. You ain't got to be in no 4,000 square foot house. I'm here to tell you, when God is ready to bring you forward, he doesn't look at education, ethnicity, background, none of that kind of stuff. It's simply, the prophet simply says, that's her. Yeah, but she's got four kids and, and no, how is she? Just know, that's her. Yeah, but how is he going to do that and this and that? Trust me, that's him. Favor spots you immediately. And, you know, favor fell on the backyard boy 
doing. Favor fell on the backyard boy while he was doing. Favor fell on the backyard boy while he was doing. Some of your most anointed people are not even looking for popularity. Not even trying to get followers. Because you know what? They know they carry the gift. It's your loss that you didn't choose me. I know what's in me. I don't need no shares. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need none of that kind of stuff. Lamar Jackson said when he got drafted, he said, look, just look at the tape. I ain't doing no comeback. I ain't running nothing. I ain't running no for it. I ain't doing none of that. I'm ready to roll. Look at the tape, and you tell me what you think. Because I know us. I know what I got. We got to treat the anointing the same way. As believers, of course, be good at your craft. Be good at that. Study your craft. I'm talking work it. Be at the top of it. Work harder than anybody else. Labor more abundantly than them all. Labor in that thing. But you got to labor the rest too. But know this. You need the anointing on your life to do exploits. You will not cheat hard work. <laughs> I promise you that. You're not going to cheat it. And social media will, 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 will have you putting a shot in your arm thinking that you're this and you're that. All the while, that young lady's in the background saying, I don't need none of that. <laughs> I don't need none of that stuff. But I tell you what, when my time comes, my gift will speak for itself. Look at the tape. <laughs> David got anointing, got anointed. Watch this now. David got anointed and went back to the sheep. You got to learn how to carry a king's anointing in the field. While God is still, while God is still showing you stuff and download stuff. You know, man, I don't feel, I, I got to wake up 9 to 5 and go back in here. David got anointed with oil by the prophet and went back to the field. He could have he said right there, where's my crown? Where's my chariot? Where's, you know, where, must, where, where are the servants? Where, where, where are the concubines? Where's everything? He didn't do that. He wasn't looking for popularity. He said, oh, wow, okay, uh, God chose me. I don't even know what that means, but let me go back and tend to the sheep and talk to the Lord out here in this field. Like I've always been doing. <clears throat> the prophet put all on David, and David walked out. Didn't hang around for no word. <laughs> okay, well, fine, fine. <sighs> what is that? He didn't change the core of who I was. I still talk to God in the field. I still tend to these sheep. I'm still going to come in this evening. I'm going to be ruddy, sweaty, and black all on my face. Why? Because I guess something happened, I guess. But, but, but I'm, 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 I guess it happened. But it's going to take a while for that thing that happened to me to supersede me in the field talking to God. Because that's the highlight of my day. Mm, mm, mm. Let's keep going. Favor. It's going to come on you to move you, to move you towards the things of God, to move you towards promotion. When this anointing hits your life and this favor hits your life, it's on you to move you towards the things of God, to glorify God. You think I want to cheapen what God is doing in my life? God says you can try all that stuff, but know this, all of that little fame stuff, throw it on the rubble at the end of the day because it ain't going to mean a doggone thing. And guess who's going to be standing? The Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. Let me tell you, here's a word for you. You better live for God because the world is going to let you down. I used to tell my children, are you so weak that people can talk you out of living for God when you know what God has did in your life? You know who God is in your life? Are you that weak? Or does, 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 does the unfair advantage when four guys are in your dormitory, Marvion Tate, four guys are, are doing this, and you know what God has done for you, and you know God is in you, and all of a sudden you find yourself trending towards how they live? I said, you got to get yourself together and learn how to manage yourself as a believer because I promise you, you're going to win in the end. How is Tim Tebow still making $10, $15 million a year just on endorsements and speaking and, and all this stuff and, 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 and the sports analysis and, and they still paying him? Because he never allowed fame to take him off God. 
He knew who he was. Well, he didn't do too well over there in Denver. He didn't do too well over there. And he's like, uh, I know what I'm carrying. I'll be okay. I still make $15, $20 million a year. What about that? Without the ice bucket. <clears throat> Listen, the anointing David got was for a king. The anointing David got was for a king, but it took a while for the field boy to even realize what had happened. <laughs> it took a while for the field boy, David, to even realize what had happened. Thought number one, the, 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 the anointing removes burdens. The anointing removes burdens. It removes burdens. That's what I want you to know tonight. It removes burdens. What is a burden? Write this in your notes. It's a peace. A, a burden is a nuisance to peace. Whatever's a nuisance to your peace, it's a burden. So you, can, you can live good, drive good, go to work, get a good check, get a bonus check, all this kind of stuff. But this burden I'm talking about, it's a nuisance to your peace. It flares back up again. Man, I thought the furniture was going to do it for me. I thought the car was going to do it for me. I thought the house. No, no, no. The, the anointing wants to remove that nuisance to your peace. Number two, the anointing puts an end to the existence of heaviness. This is why you receive the anointing. It's, it, puts, it says it removes birds and destroys yoke. It puts an end to the existence of heaviness. It puts an end to the existence of heaviness. Number three. The anointing removes circumstances that are causing annoyances to your soul. It removes circumstances that's causing annoyances to your soul. Let me tell you something. You're in a situation in your business, in your job. It, the, the anointing doesn't remove the people. It grows you up. It may not even remove the circumstance. It just makes you a different person in the circumstance. <laughs> it gives you different eyes and spiritual endurance in the circumstance. God, I need you to come down. God's like, I already anointed you to handle it. I ain't got to change it. I'm changing you. <clears throat> Glory to God. Whew. All right. Next off. When the power of the Holy Spirit brings the anointing on your life, there's a freshness to it. A quickening that changes the atmosphere. There's a, there's a freshness to your life when the anointing hits your life. And there's a quickening that changes the atmosphere. I don't know about you if you've been in a, uh, an argument with your spouse or whatever it is, this, that, and the other. And, 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 and uh, <laughs> this happened to me two days ago. There was no argument, nothing like that. But, but the Holy Spirit had pointed out to me, uh, you was very difficult today. You was, you was just difficult. You, you wasn't mean or nothing like that, but you was difficult. I'm telling you, you was difficult. Some things you could have answered right off, you didn't do that. I, I don't understand that, Derek. Some things you could have just said, okay, go ahead, and you didn't do that. I, I don't understand that, Derek. You was just kind of difficult today. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling me. So my wife laying down going to sleep. I couldn't even go to sleep. Because God said, I want you to stare at the beauty and the gift I brought to you. I want you to look at her and ask yourself this question. Does she even deserve that from you? I said, my God, I'm trying to go to sleep. My eyelids are burning up, and I can't go to sleep. Ain't nothing on TV. He said, oh, you said, no, 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 no. I just want you to know, does that precious lady right there deserve that from you? Who do you think you are? It was difficult today. How you get better at that? I said, Lord, I received that. And you're absolutely right. I'm going to get better at that. Guess what? A freshness came over me. And I'm telling you, in 24 hours, I see my wife different. More glory, more beauty, more affection, more, more, that I've never seen in my 28 years knowing her. I've never seen what I've seen. The anointing kicked in. Why? Because I allowed God to chase me and say, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. 
Let me tell you something. You was difficult today, and that's just unnecessary. I did not bring this person to your life for you to allow the world and situations and circumstances to cause you to be that difficult in the day. Why? It's a nuisance to her soul. And vice versa. Women, wives, y'all too. God's going to talk to you. Think you can just treat them any kind of way and not do for them and not sacrifice for them. Stop that. That's a nuisance. God should be dealing with you right now. My God. Brought this man into your life, protector. This that ain't running around. You kind of know where he is 24 hours a day. My God, and you want to have an attitude or a little slight attitude with him all the time? No, stop it. Ask God what's wrong. What's wrong with you? Don't throw stones at me now. Next thought. The anointing causes you to defy normal capability. Got one minute. The anointing will cause you to defy normal capability. You better walk out of here tonight. You better hear my voice on, on live stream. It causes you to defy normal capability. It's time to walk in it. It's time to walk higher. It's time to see yourself as a spiritual being and stop trying to make things happen and allow the anointing to remove burdens and destroy yokes for your life. The anointing is a lifetime empowerment on the life, a lifetime empowerment on the life of an abiding believer. See, the only way you can believe in the anointing is you're spending time with God. <laughs> and you can hear God's voice say, no, nah, I don't do that. No, nah, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. I got you. See, it's a lifetime empowerment for the believer who's abiding in God. So a lot of times we try to figure out, why is the devil getting up on us? Because you ain't spending time with the devil, and you ain't spending time with God. You're doing you. I tell you what, at least sometimes the devil can say something and try to get over on me, and I at least know to go to God. Well, my God, if, if, if you ain't paying attention to the devil, he ain't driving you back to God's word. You, you're just kind of doing you, and it's hard to do exploits just in your natural capability. <clears throat> this, this, is, this is for a pastor. As a pastor, it's hard to flow in the anointing. It's for every pastor at the side of my voice. As a pastor, it's hard to flow in the anointing when the people's voice is louder than God's word of truth. That's what happened to Saul. And God says, you know what? Uh, give me that kingdom from him because he, he can't follow instructions. The rebellious are oblivious. He's oblivious. He still think he did, 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 did the will of God. He don't even hear the sheep going. He still think he did a good job. He's oblivious. Guess what? Take, get, take his kingdom. Give it to Mr. Ruddy over here. Give it to David. David killed bears and lions and, and Goliath with that anointing on his life. Next talk. The anointing causes the believers to advance beyond their natural capabilities. I want you to receive that. I want you to, I want you to come on situations and circumstance. I want you to feel, you start feeling the pressure of the day, the pressure of the meeting, the pressure of the deal. I want you to say out loud, I'm anointed to handle this. I'm anointed to make this phone call. I'm anointed to carry this meeting. I'm anointed to sit in this meeting. I'm anointed to handle this. Tomorrow's going to be here. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is going to take care of me. Angels are all around me and canvassed about. Favor goes ahead of me in all that I do. I can't lose. That's how I want you to carry yourself. I can't lose. Why? I'm anointed by God. This was somebody. If we poured half the energy into what's next, as we put into regret, our lives would drastically change immediately. Well, oh my God, I regret I did this back here. I regret I got a divorce. I don't know how God sees me. Oh, that regret. If you poured half of the energy that you pour into past mistakes and what's next, your life was shoom. Well, I wish I could have done this right. Oh my God, what happened to him? Oh my God, what happened to her? Oh, where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? A lot of times, as a parent, you got to realize this. Adult children choose. And when they choose, they, they, they can negate the seeds you put in them and choose this. But guess what? It's not your fault. But if you're not careful, you're just living in regress, and you can't even see what's next. You can't even flow to what's next because you live in the past regrets. And God says, come out of that. He's making his decision. She's making her decision. And guess what? They're free moral agents. They are, they are products of Mark chapter 4. Just like you are, Mom. Just like you are, Dad. And guess what? They're choosing that, and you keep praying over them. I'm still with them, but they're choosing that. But you stop allowing that to label you and your future. Move forward. Yeah. 
you want your children to approve so bad and don't realize they ain't, they're, they're not. Look, they can be doing them. You be doing God and you pray over them. But when them doing them affects you doing God, you got to say, wait a minute. These regrets are over with. I'm done with it. I know what I did. I'm supposed to do. I know what I put in this boy. I know what I put in this girl. And guess what? They're choosing something else. That's fine. Let them go for it. But guess what? Like we all know, life has a way of humbling you. Man, daddy was right. Good God. Mama was right. Woof. Oh, man, I got to finish. Oh, shocks. All right. Oh, Lord. Man, boo. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to read these fast. I, I, I got to get them out. Uh, next on. Uh, <clears throat> Stop labeling your oppositions giants. They are inferior to you. David came upon a giant, and he didn't say, who is this giant? He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Wait, wait a minute, little fella. You're, 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 you're five foot five, and he's standing nine feet. Surely he's a giant in your eyes. Ah, uh, I don't label my oppositions as I see him. And that's part of our problems. You start, you, you, you create these giants. Oh, my God, my career. Oh, my God, my business. Oh, my God, my teenager. Oh, my God, my dear. Oh, my God. And it's like, why are you creating all, all these giants in your life? You got to be like David. And just call it for what it is. I almost says, who's this clown, but I can't say that. <laughs> Who is this great human being trying to steal my peace? <laughs> I mean, what does this job think? They can just steal my fatherhood to my children? Does this job actually think they can steal me being a great wife to my husband when I get home? Are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, the, the next paycheck I get, I'm taking 30% off of you. I'm going to let you know that you are not my God. Who do you think you are? Still in my peace. Still in my evenings. Still in my weekend. Still in my evening of peace with my wife, my kids. Who do you think you are? David never labeled the opposition a giant. He called him an uncircumcised Philistine. What was that? Let me bring you down to size. You are not a giant in my eyes. Because the Lord is on my side. Okay, wrap it up. Oh, God. Ah. Talent, skill, technology is not the anointing. These lights, these lights, these screens, projectors, speakers, all this stuff, lights going on, that's not the anointing. Smoke, fog in the sanctuary, that, 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 that ain't no anointing. Nothing wrong with that. It's not the anointing, though. We have all the excellence, and we put on a great production in church, and people leave untouched by Jesus. Not here. We're spiritual traffic cops pointing you to God. You better be touched by Jesus. Jesus is your Lord. He is my Lord. We're pointing you to Jesus. We taught on John 15 for 12 weeks. Abide in him, and he abides in you. We can put on all this big production, and it's a tragedy if people leave untouched by Jesus. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. All right. I'm going to leave you with this. You ever been on an elevator? People are okay as long as favor keeps you even. <laughs> People are okay as long as favor in your life keeps both of y'all just like this. They're okay. I'm quite sure David's brothers were okay. I had a little rut back there. He, he, he's, he's good. He can sit at the table and eat the same food we eat. He's kind of got the, you know, the same. Our dad, Jesse, kind of takes care of him. He, he's okay. People okay as long as your favor, we're bumping our heads on the same cap. But if you're on that elevator and you're at a resort and you know the presidential suites on floor 50, 
You know, if you, you ain't got the little, little black card, you, you, you get up to uh, floor 40, you, you can't even access the next 10 floors. <laughs> so you met your girlfriend and her husband and, you know, whatever it is, you met them, and it's, it's four of you guys, and, you know, it's just like, you know, guys, we're going to meet and come back down to the lobby, grab something to eat, you grab something to eat, and you come back, and this, that, and the other. And man, everybody's giggling, gagging, that thing is great. And, 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 they, and we get in the elevator and hit that thing. And they said, well, we're going to see you guys to your room and just make sure you, you know, we're going to see you guys to your room. That's how we do things. We're going to make sure, you know, our friends are okay. Oh, okay, okay, you can see us to our room. And uh, <clears throat> the husband started walking towards the door at f- f- uh, floor 25. And that thing said, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> he said, wait a minute, how, how did that? I said, oh, I, honey, you got the black card? Said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're. How many, what floor y'all on? 49. 49? Man, we on floor 18. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? They don't want to stand at the door and just walk in. They're going to. Watch this. How did y'all get. What, what? Did they upgrade y'all or something? Let me tell you something. People okay as long as. You send a text that night. Hey, hey guys, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the beach in the morning. We're going to ride some scooters, so on and so forth. And then we're going to, you know, hang out, get some lunch, this, that, and the other. Then we're going to do a nice night of bowling, this, that, and the other. And you get a text back. Oh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to go that route tomorrow. People okay as long as favor is even. But when that anointing start moving you up, and you ain't got the masters, you ain't got the PhD, but you're empowered by God, all of a sudden, people start acting funny. And I'm here to tell you, when the anointing is on your life, there's no stopping you. There's no, there, 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 there's, 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 why? Because you are absolutely sure the outcome favors you. You know that. You, you don't even, it, it favors me. I don't, I don't care what they say, it favors me. Why? The anointing of God is on my life. I've been anointed by God to prosper and do well in everything I do. And I'm here to tell you, to, 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 I want to release you into tonight and the rest of this year with this word right here. Everything that God has for you, wants to do through you, you have to receive the anointing for the next level. So go ahead and stand to your feet and lift your hands to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. And you mark my words. You mark my words. After this, we're going to rededicate our lives back to the Lord, but I'm going to release the anointing of God on your life. And I know what I'm talking about. I know what we live in. I know the exports, exports, but I know the favor of God we walk in. But you you show show it off, and I ain't got to show it off. You stay just like David. You stay in the field with a king's anointing and just keep on rolling. And then when God does it, it's like, man, we didn't see that coming. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, the anointing that's on Pastor Creflo Dollar, Michael T. Smith, Myself and my wife, all the way down from Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagen, that same anointing, God, I release a double portion over these people. God, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus, they are anointed by you. They are anointed to advance. Things will begin to go well for them. They will do exploits. God, answers they've been looking for careers they've been looking for, outlets they've been looking for, pathways they've been looking for, God, they will become clear. And the favor of God on their lives will increase like never before. And God, they will have to honor you. They will have to bend the knee to you, God, because you're going to be just that good to them. You are are anointed by God. We release the anointing over your life. I declare and decree a holy life you would desire to lead. You will have an insatiable desire to live for God. Come hell or high water, not again. No one will talk you out of living for God. God wants to take you and do exploits. Don't you cheapen your walk with him. Heavenly Father, we rededicate our lives back to you. We draw near to you, God. God, we will speak of you in public. We will live for you in public. 
We will acknowledge you that you are our master, our Lord, El Elyon, the most high God. Oh, yeah, that warmness that you feel coming over your body right now. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and receive it. Woo, the Holy Spirit is in this place. Go ahead and receive it. Go ahead and cry out to God. Go ahead and cry out to God. Go ahead and receive it right now. Go ahead and receive that anointing right now. Go ahead and receive that anointing right now. Work, push through the awkwardness and open your mouth. Push through the awkwardness and talk to your Father that is in heaven that hears your prayer. Push through it right now. Oh, voice your weaknesses to him. Voice your concerns to him. Oh, allow him in. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to give you peace that passes all understanding. All of those nuisances to your peace. All of those nuisances to your peace. They annoy you. God says, give it to me. I'm going to take you higher, says the Lord. I'm going to take you farther, says the Lord. You will have no choice but to say, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my eyes. By the Spirit of God, you're going to find yourself having to open your mouth. You're going to have a great stage to do it. Don't you dare deter. Don't you dare abort. You let them know God works through me. I live for God. My Father in heaven watches over my soul. Father, we rededicate our lives back to you. And Father, we declare our hearts and ears are inclined to your word. And Father, we abide in you and you abide in us. Father, you are the true vine. Oh God, we sense this connection. We sense it, Lord. We receive it, God. We receive it. We receive it. Oh, Father, we just worship you. We adore you, God. Oh, yeah, you feel that peace. Yeah, you feel it. You feel it. You feel that clarity now. Oh, you feel that burden coming off of your life right now. You're not even thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow's taken care of. Oh, the yokes are being removed right now. The yokes are being destroyed right now. You feel it. Oh, a spirit of ease is coming on you right now. A spirit of lightness is coming on you right now. Yeah, give it to God. God, we don't desire to be popular. We desire to be anointed. Repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that I receive everything that you have for me. Heavenly Father, I abide in you, and you abide in me. And Father, I thank you that you are the center of my life. And God, I receive your wisdom. I receive your favor. And Heavenly Father, I thank you that the spirit of might, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of understanding, it abides deeply within me. Father, lead me. Guide me. I receive your covenant of guidance. I bind the strong man in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west. And Heavenly Father, I release my insecurities over to you. And I cast down everything that tries to exalt itself against the things of God. I am who I am in you. For you are the great I am. And El Elyon, the most high God in my life. Go ahead and shout about that.